Thanks for the lift. Anytime, Mrs. Reardon. And how does your husband like having his own office? Fine. Clients are just pouring in. Goodbye. One fine little woman, that Mrs. Reardon. Please. Let's not have a scene. Look, it's just as tough on me as it is on you. Listen, let's face the facts. You're a luxury. I can't afford a luxury. I can't keep you any longer. After all, I'm a married man. I've got to think of my wife. And about time. Oh, Mrs. Reardon. Sally. What's going on here? Maybe you can explain to Miss Jacobs that I'm letting her go only because business is so bad I can't afford to keep a stenographer. <laughs> Now, don't cry, Miss Jacobs. Someday this will be the largest detective agency in town, then my husband will take you back at a bigger salary. Now, look, here's a bonus for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Reardon. I, I don't mind anything. But your husband shouldn't have called me that name. What'd you call her, Bill? I didn't call her any name. You did, too. You called me a stenographer, and I'm a private secretary. <laughs> Listen, I gave her a week's salary. Why the extra five dollars? Ten dollars for being here six months without flirting with you. Oh, yeah? Lady, you've been robbed. Well, that little... Now, that settles it. From now on, I'm your secretary. No, 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 thanks. I don't need a secretary. I don't even need a stenographer. Now, you go on home. See if you can't think up a good menu for a change. I'm tired of going home cooking for you. I want to go out in the world and meet people. Oh, no, no. It's no life for a girl like you. Millions of clamoring clients. The white lights, the gay nightlife. Oh, no, go home. Go home, little girl, before it's too late. Mister, for better or for worse, from now on, I'm your secretary. All right, take a letter. To whom, please? Ah, what's the difference? Oh, Bill, keep your chin up. Rome wasn't built in a day. Now, who cares about Rome? All I'm interested in is the career of William H. Reardon. Listen to me, young lady. Six months ago, I was making $3,500 a year as a special investigator in the district attorney's office. Mm, doing all the work while the DA got all the glory. Now, you listen to me, Bill Reardon. I did once. Now look at me, my own boss. No work, no glory, and nothing a year. Success. Someday you'll thank me for making you go on your own. You're the best detective in this town, and you know it. Yeah, I know it, and you know it. The trouble is, nobody else knows it. Someday they'll find out. Now, tell me something, Snooks. If I'm as smart as you say, how would I happen to fall for a dumb dame like you? Believe me, I've sat up nights worrying about just that thing. Well, there you are. If I'm really a good detective, I'd be able to explain how the whole thing happened. You are a good detective. You're just stupid. Oh, now I'm stupid. About some things. Yeah, a minute ago, I was the smartest guy in town. Now I'm stupid. Well, make up your mind. Which is it? Both. You are the smartest guy in town, but it's publicity you're stupid about. Nobody knows you have an office. I don't expect to get any clients. Bet I could get more publicity in two minutes than you've gotten in six months. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right, young lady. From now on, suppose you take charge of the whole office. Mm -hmm. For two cents, I would. Well, if I had two cents. Maybe that's a customer. Maybe. Yes, sir. May I see Mr. Reardon, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Reardon, here's a client. I'll get those letters right out, Mr. Reardon. Oh. 
Say I did. What is it? A divorce case? No, they want us to do some collecting for him. Fellow owes him some money. Well, anything's better than nothing to get an advance. No, no, it's not the sort of thing you can ask for an advance on. You dope, you can get an advance on anything. No. All right, see for yourself. Oh, Bill. What are we gonna do now? I'm doing it. Hello. Is the district attorney there? Hello, Joe. Yeah, that's Bill Reardon. When'll he be in? Half an hour. Okay, thanks. Where's your pride? I just swallowed it. Listen, honey, I'm not going on relief when there's a good job waiting for me. Come on. Well, you can quit if you want to, but I'm going to carry on here. All right, baby, you carry on until the first of the month. You might take care of this, too. I'll call you in half an hour. Wish me luck? Yes, I do. Hope you don't get the job. Well, if we don't, there's a cute little bench in Central Park where we can spend the winter. Oh, Bill. You better start packing. Silly pictures, as far as I can see. I never could run an office. It's just a schlemiel, that's all. I beg your pardon, is Mr. Reardon in? No. Well, can you tell me when he will be in? I want to see him on business. Business? Oh, won't you sit down? Mr. Reardon has gone out for a moment. When will he be back? Well, he won't. Oh, that is, he's, uh, right now he's out on a very important case, and I don't know exactly when he will be back. Would you like him to call you? No, I prefer not to leave my name. Oh, just as you wish, Mrs. Frazier. How did you know my name? Uh, your picture was in the paper when you were married. It's a detective's business never to forget a face. Are you a detective? Oh, yes, yes. I'm Mr. Reardon's chief operator. I handle all the women clients. You see, women often feel they can talk more freely uh, to another woman. There may be something in that. Uh, do sit down. There. You'll promise to keep the matter confidential. Oh, I won't even discuss it with Mr. Reardon. Well, he'll have to know, won't he? Not unless you want him to. Your case will be entered on our books as a number. Just a moment. Oh. Uh, our last case was number 375. Your case number will be 376. Now, what can I do for you? Someone I'd like to have followed. Her name is Anne Calhoun. Has this inscription anything to do with it? She was engaged to my husband before I... Mm, I'm beginning to understand. There hasn't been anything to understand until recently. Suddenly, Mr. Fraser's been getting letters and phone calls from her. I haven't spied, but I know her handwriting and I know her voice. There's something going on between them, and you've got to find out what it is. 376. I'll stake my reputation on it. If I don't solve this case before the first of the month, I'll retire from business. Fine. Tomorrow I'm going away on a two weeks trip. When I get back, I want a complete report on Anne Calhoun. Everybody she sees and where and when she sees them. If you go away and forget it. Maybe I'll have good news for you when you get back. Any news would be better than this suspense. Oh, by the way, uh, my husband and I are going to the Skyline Club tonight for dinner with Believe it or not, Miss Calhoun, if you want to get a good look at her. I'll be there. Thanks for the tip. I don't know what your rates are, but this should do until I get back. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Miss, um, Operator number seven. Goodbye. Goodbye. One, two, three. Three hundred dollars. This office needs is a few pictures on the wall. This will go here. Here. Oh, Bill, we should have done this a long time ago. 
Reading Detective Agency, Operator Sir. Oh, well, hello, Bill. Oh, you sound awfully happy. Oh, you landed that job with the district attorney. Why, that's very nice. What's the salary? 75 smackers a week and every week. Well, what's the matter? You don't sound very enthusiastic. Oh, I think it's wonderful. Yes, I really do. And how's the Reardon Agency coming along under its new management? Splendidly, thank you. Customers are popping in all over the place. Customers? Huh. Name one. Why, Bill, I'm surprised. The Reardon Detective Agency never reveals the name of its clients. That's our policy. What'd you say? Any more bills come in? Oh, yes, three of them. Ah, oh, forget them. What do you say we celebrate tonight? Oh, gee, that sounds swell. Where do I want to go? Well, let's see. Uh, how about the Skyline Club? Can we afford that? No, we cannot afford the Skyline Club. Don't be silly. Bill, just this once, please. All right, if you promise to have one drink in the regular dinner, none of that a la carte stuff. I promise. All right. Skyline Club. Huh, little gold digger. And then I'll take some filet mignon. Oui, madame. Ixnay. Oh, yes, Ixnay. You mean instead of filet mignon? Do you have any Ixnay? Ixnay? Pardon? Well, never mind if you haven't any. I'll just take filet mignon. Oui, madame. You see, they're all out of it. And uh, chiffonade salad. Salad chiffonade, madame. Then I'll have strawberry parfait and coffee. Pork chops on the regular dinner. Any wine, monsieur? No. Oh, I'll take some. No, madame. no wine. Thank you, monsieur. You mean no wine? That's what I mean. No wine. Not even a teeny weeny itsy bitsy. Not even a teeny weeny itsy bitsy. You mean no wine? Yeah, that's it. No wine. Religious scruples? No. No, just mathematics. Philly Mignon, 350. Strawberry parfait, 75 cents. Six martinis. I only had three. They're charging me for mine, too, you know. And all I've got in my pocket's a $20 bill. Uh, you don't even have a couple of dollars in your purse, do you? Money? Yeah. Why'd you say so? I've got a half a dollar. Hand it over. I'm in no mood for quibbling. Oh, Shane. Hello, Mr. Redden. That's the man I wanted to see. Will you cash a check for me? Sure. What do you want? Oh, no, it's 25. You better make it 50, in case we want some wine. Yeah. Oh, uh, Mr. Shane, Mrs. Ridden. How do you do? Here's your 50. Thanks. Got a pen? Yeah. You're taking an awful chance, Mr. Shane. I don't think he has $50 in his account. <laughs> hey, she has a great sense of humor. Yeah. <clears throat> can I buy you a drink? No, thanks. Have one on the house. Oh, no, we couldn't do that. Oh, you can have one more, Bill. I'm taking you home. What'll it be, Mrs. Ridden? Uh, a martini, please. Same thing. Uh, Jim, three martinis. I haven't seen you around lately. No, no, I've been pretty busy. How do you like being on your own? I'm not exactly on my own anymore. I'm back with the DA again. Say, you don't happen to have his home phone number, do you? Well, yeah, Lexington 28672. But he won't be home till pretty late. Thanks. To you, Mrs. Reardon. Oh, to you, Mr. Shane. May your checks never bounce back. <laughs> Remind me to talk to you when we get home. Pardon me, sir, but you're wanted in the office. Oh, excuse me. I'll probably see you around later. Yeah. Nice personality. Yeah, most gamblers have. Gambler? He happens to own that casino across the river. Oh, why didn't I marry a man like that instead of a prohibitionist? Table is ready, monsieur. All right, thanks. Looks swell. This one will be all right. Would Madame prefer the table over by the window? No, we can't see anyone over there. I like this one, right in the center of things. And we can watch people coming in. As you wish, Madame. Monsieur? I don't know why we couldn't have had a decent table. What's wrong with this table? Oh, nothing. This is great. Nice draft, too. I knew you'd like it. Do you remember way back when I said I'd take you to the Skyline Club? 
And you promised you'd go light on everything? Oh, that was before we made the $50. Mm. Yes, it was. Of course, we didn't quite make the $50. There's just a chance that Mr. Shane might deposit that check. Well, even if he does, that's $50 more than we came in with. That's certainly a profit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it certainly is. Um, do me a favor, will you? Don't mention it to the income tax people. Oh, you can trust me, Bill. No, my name's Reardon. Good evening, Mr. Fraser. Good evening. Your table is all ready. Oh, thank you. I wish you weren't going away, darling. I'll probably be sorry myself. Why don't you get yourself a pair of field glasses? As long as I'm paying 90 cents for that puree mongol, I'd like to see you eat some of it. Why don't you watch where you're going? Anything wrong, madame? I should say there is. If you think I'm going to sit here and be jostled about by everyone, you're mistaken. But the guy never came anywhere near you. I don't see how you have the nerve to offer anyone this table. I want to sit at that table. Come along, Bill. Sorry, madame. Your wife? You want to make anything out of it? Breast of guinea hen and hearts of artichokes and butter sauce. This is more like it. Are you angry at something, Bill? Me? No, what have I got to be angry about? Well, I don't know. You just look like you're ready to sock somebody in the jaw. No, no, I got over that an hour ago. Now I'm looking for an axe. I think it's silly getting mad at a waiter. You haven't by any chance found an answer to that question yet, have you? What question? How a smart guy like me happened to marry a dumb cluck like you? I don't think there is any explanation. That's what I thought. But you did like my dancing. Oh, did I? Let's try that. Oh, don't be silly, Bill. You couldn't dance these modern dances. Not at your age. Oh, not at my age. Maybe I'm too old for you. I wouldn't want a younger man. Father. I don't know why we come to these places anyhow. I do. I like to dance. That's a good idea. Come on. Oh, but I just promised this dance to Walter. What? Didn't I, Walter? Oh, yeah, yes, of course you did. Say, who's engaged to her anyhow? Oh, don't be so jealous, Jerry. All right, Bill. This is one of the new dances. Sure you can do it. Well, if you didn't want to dance, why'd you ask me? Well, then I'll dance by myself. That's my little gentleman. <laughs> Did you bring it? Yes, it's right here. Well, how am I doing for an old man? <laughs> now, don't you be nervous, Bill. You just follow me. Sorry, I should have brought my running shoes. <laughs> New step. I don't have to say thank you, do I? Not to me. Bill. What have I got to applaud? You want to dance again, don't you? This time we do it my way. Well, what now? Oh, you have to excuse me. Finished, monsieur? I certainly am. I've taken about all I can stand for one evening. Now, listen, never mind the rest of the dinner. Just bring me something to drink. Champagne. Yeah. 
the best champagne and one glass. Yes, but madame. One glass. Yes, sir. One glass. Good night. Good evening, Miss Calhoun. Good evening, Mr. Shane. So nice to see you. I didn't dare hope it would be so soon. What's that? Champagne. Where's my glass? Hmm. I only ordered one. Huh. Not a taste, even. Ah, oh, here she is now. About time. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I just told him I didn't mind letting him have my girl, but I thought he ought to return her. Did you think I was lost? Well, it wouldn't be the first time he lost you. Now, what do you mean by that? Walter, Walter, no. I'll tell you what I mean by that. I'm engaged to Anne now, and I'll kill the first man that horns it. It's all right, gentlemen. It's just my wife. Well, why don't you pick me up, you big lummox? I picked you up once. Now look at me. Are you hurt? No. Everything's under control. I'm sorry to have intruded. Oh, please go on with your quarreling. I thought I married a gentleman. Well, live and learn. Anyway, it serves you right for snooping into other people's affairs. I haven't snooped. You have, too. You've been snooping all evening. You're just a snoop poopity poop, that's what you are. Of all the selfish, beastly pigs I ever met in my life, Bill Reardon. Uh, hello, Reardon. Really? Oh, Shuster, hiya. Who's that? There you go, snooping again. What's it to you? His name's Shuster. I know his name's Shuster. What does he do? What difference does it make what he does? He's a lawyer. What kind of a lawyer? What difference does it make what kind of a lawyer? He's a divorce lawyer. Wait a minute, I want to see that guy. Get me two bottles of this and one glass. Oui, madame. What did the lawyer say then? Well, in New York State, the grounds are desertion, insanity, and a couple other things. In California, it's mental cruelty. Uh, what's mental cruelty? Refusing to dance with your husband when he wants to dance. Dancing with him when he doesn't want to dance. Snooping. Snooping when he doesn't want to dance, and dancing when he doesn't want to snoop. Yeah. In Russia, a man gets the alimony. Oh, let's go to Russia. All right, Sally. Let's go to Russia. Where? Timetable. Where's our waiter? Waiter? Where? Sally? Oh. Sally! <laughs> I tell you what. What? Let's go to bed. Well, that's a very smart idea. How do you ever think of that idea? It just came to me. Do you really think that's a good idea, or are you just saying it? Oh, no. I really think it's wonderful. Hmm. You know, I get a lot of good ideas, but I'm afraid to mention them. You shouldn't be afraid, Bill. If you can't tell your wife, who well, can you tell? Tell my mother. The boy's best friend's his mother. There you go, sticking up for your mother instead of your own flesh and blood. Come on, let's go to bed. I've got to get up early for the DA. And I've got to get up early for my office. I know what, I'll get us some hot milk. That'll make us sleep. There's just nothing. Oh, there's nothing in the world like hot milk. Bill. Bill. Bill! That's my... mm. If I get you some hot milk, you'll go right to sleep. No, leave me alone. Hot milk's the only thing. Say, how do you expect to go to sleep with a tight collar on?
What? What? I was just trying to put you to sleep, honey. Uh, there must be something I can do for poor old Bill. I know. Might have turned off the alarm before he left. Bill! Wake up, Bill. It's late. Mm. Poor Bill. Oh, poor Sally. Walter Fraser. I'll kill the first guy that horns in. I'll kill the first guy that horns in. I'll kill the first guy that horns in. Sorry, Bill, but business is business. Dispatch, give me the city desk. City desk. Good morning. Could I interest you in the Fraser murder? You might. Why? Did you kill him? No. But I think I know who did. Sally Ridden of the Ridden Detective Agency. You know. No, I don't know, but go ahead. Hey? What? Say that again. 63rd Street. We'll be right over. Fine, that's great. Stay right where you are. And you say that Marlowe made this threat in the presence of witnesses? You mind give me a little more? My on husband that? and I both heard him. Where is your husband? Well, he's down at the DA's office covering the case from their angle. How did Marlowe look when he said it? Well, don't quote me, but he had a very ominous glitter in his eye. And you were close enough to see this ominous glitter in yes, his I eye. Yes, I was. My back was right toward him. Marlowe would have killed Fraser right then and there if, if I hadn't stopped him. How could you stop him? Well, I threw a chair at Marlowe just as he was getting ready to draw his gun. Interesting, if true. Don't forget to put that the rear end detective agency gave you your clue. Publicity helps, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's not fair. He has no pants on. Hey, give me that plate. Come on, Joe. You want to be ashamed of yourself. What happened? What's going on? Oh, Bill, you haven't got your pants on. What was that noise? What was that noise? Oh, you finally heard something, did you? I've been slamming in and out doors all morning trying to wake you up. You were supposed to be down at the district attorney's. You know what time it is? Ow. Give me a clean pair of socks, will you, Sally? And bring me the morning paper. Oh, there isn't any. Well, no clean socks? No, uh, no paper. You see, the uh, boy forgot it this morning, or else the neighbor stole it again. Uh, let me help you with your socks. Bill, do you love me? Yeah, only don't ask me in the morning. No, I mean really love, no matter what happens. Sure, sure. And no picture could ever come between us. And no picture could... So what's the matter with you? Are you crazy? What picture? Well, any picture. You know, like when you and I go to the movies and we see a picture and I like it and you don't. You, you make an awful fuss. Oh, let me alone, will you? Here I am trying to get the DA's office on time. Here you are bothering me about a moving picture. And can it ever come between us? Hello. Yeah. 
What? Holy smoke! Yeah, yeah, I'll be right down. Say, Sally, you know that party was sitting next to us in the cafe? Yeah. Well, one of them was a guy named Fraser. He was murdered last night. No. Yeah. Bill, this is your chance. You pick up the trail from the time they left the restaurant to Marlowe's house. Oh, that's all I gotta do. Oh, we'll break this case in no time. If we solve it before election, we'll be heroes. If we don't... I know. If we don't, I'm the GOAT. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I know you wouldn't say it. Well, suppose a miracle occurs and I do crack this case. You think you might mention me in one of those interviews? David Jones. I'll give you all the publicity in the world. Yeah, well, I never got it before. Hey, wait a minute. You've got it now. What? No picture can ever come between us. Who's your tailor, Redden? Blonde sleuth accuses Marlowe. Why should I hire anybody who says that? So she'll stop saying it. I don't want any part of it. Say, who's the lawyer here, you or I? You made the threat, didn't you? Yes, I made the threat, but I didn't kill him. Well, whether you did or not is unimportant. The important thing is to make sure that you're not convicted. Yes? Mrs. Redden is here. Send her right in. You be nice to her. Nice to her? I'd like to kill her. That's the sort of talk that got you into trouble before. Mrs. Reardon. How do you do? Mr. Ketterling. How are you, Mrs. Reardon? You know Mr. Marlowe? Oh, yes. We met last night, didn't we? Won't you sit down? Thank you. Mrs. Reardon, I've explained to Mr. Marlowe that you've agreed to do a little investigating for us. Yes, I have. Of course, we're very busy at the office right now. But this is such an interesting case, I felt I couldn't afford to turn it down. It is interesting, isn't it, Mr. Marlowe? That's very generous of you, Mrs. Reardon. Isn't it, Jerry? Oh, yes, it's very generous. Oh, well, money isn't everything. We agreed upon 200 a week and expenses, didn't we? Oh, yes. Yes, I have your check all ready for you, Mrs. Reardon. No, wait a minute. How are you going to fix that newspaper story? Oh, that. May I use the telephone? Sure. Thank you. Don't you worry about a thing. I can fix it. Hello? Give me the city desk. Hello? Uh, this is Mrs. Reardon. Yes, I have a new story for you. Have you a pencil ready? All right. Marlowe is innocent, says blonde investigator. What? Now, I know I said he was guilty. But uh, I've just picked up some new evidence. Hello, Bill. Oh, it's dark, isn't it? Oh, that one's on. <laughs> there you are, honey. about this. Bill, you promised that no picture would ever come between us. Yes, but I never said anything about shorts. Well, anyway, it shows you have nice straight legs. Never mind my legs. Why'd you repeat that crack of Marlowe's to the reporter? Well, I told you I was going to get publicity for the office. Anyway, Marlowe did say it. He was drunk. I always tell the truth when, I'm, when I've had a few drinks. If you do, it's the only time. Yes, it's very obvious. If you're going to kill someone, you don't advertise it, do you? Have you had your dinner? No, I don't want any dinner. Maybe you'd feel better if you had something to eat. I'd feel better if I murdered you. Make it a monkey out of me with a D.A. I'm sorry, Bill. I won't butt in again. Really, I won't. If I thought you meant that, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. Oh, I do mean it, Bill. Honest, I do. Okay. Okay, you can live. If you really mean it. Of course I mean it. I appreciate how you feel, Sally, but... It's a man's place to make the money for the house, a woman's place to take care of the man when he comes home. Oh, you're absolutely right, Bill. Right. And to prove it, I'll make you the best supper you ever had. How do you like your coffee, weak or strong? <laughs> it's 
strong. I got things to do tonight. What things? I thought you were gonna do the housework. Well, a wife ought to take some interest in what her husband's doing, don't you think? No. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, all right. Are you and the DA gonna arrest anyone tonight? No, we're not going to arrest anyone tonight. We don't arrest people on a lot of flimsy evidence, and we don't accuse them till we're pretty sure they're guilty. Oh, I think that's a very nice attitude, Bill. But don't forget to question the butler. What butler? I don't know. All I know is that when I read a detective story, there's always a butler. Open the sardines, Bill. Butler. I thought you were going to take care of the housework. Hurry up, will you? I've got a date with the DA. We're going to reenact the murder tonight. Ow! Oh, Bill, did you hurt yourself? No, I just lost a hand. Oh, well, do be careful. Where are you going to reenact the crime? In Central Park. Oh, well, that's very silly. You ought to reenact it where the crime is committed. Oh, don't. That's the last can. It might be easy enough for anyone to get up on this terrace from the other building. Yeah, but these doors were locked from the inside. The glass isn't shattered. So it couldn't have been done from here. There's Mrs. Fraser. Uh-oh. You can't go in there. Isn't this the Marlowe apartment? That's right. Well, I have to take this into Mr. Reardon. It's very important. I'm from the district attorney's office. Oh, just a minute. I'll take it to him. You wait here. What I want to find out is just where each person was when the shot was fired. What about you, Miss Calhoun? I was in the kitchen mixing a drink. Where'd you last see Mr. Fraser? Here in the living room. It's true, isn't it, that you were once engaged to Mr. Fraser? Yes, I was. And now you're engaged to Mr. Marlowe? Yes. What of it? Nothing. Only I may have to dig into these relationships. So if I ask a few personal questions, it won't be out of idle curiosity. Where were you, Mrs. Fraser, when the shot was fired? I was in the library. I was just reaching for the phone when... That's all right. How about you, Marlowe? Frankly, I'd had a few drinks. I couldn't swear just where I was. Why, Jerry, you were in the kitchen with me. But Jerry... Yes, Mrs. Fraser? Nothing. But you were about to say something. Well, Jerry had walked through the living room with me to show me where the phone was. The shot came almost immediately, and I didn't think he'd had time to get back to the kitchen. He had just come back when the shot was fired. Well, what about it, Marlowe? I really don't remember. Yeah, nobody seems to remember much around here. Mr. Reardon, the lady brought this. Huh? She's waiting for an answer. No answer. What are you two talking about? Is it against the law for me to give an order to my butler? But where were you last night? I was asleep. The shot awakened me. I put on my bathrobe and I, I came down. How long have you worked for Mr. Marlowe? I, I engaged him in London two years. Let him talk for himself. Who'd you work for before Marlowe hired? For uh, Dr. Murray. There's nothing wrong with your memory now, is there? You might try remembering a few things about last night. I'll take another look around. I'll see what I can do. You know Jerry's innocent. I know only one thing. Walter is dead. I've been all over this place, too. That gun ain't nowhere in here. It's got to be someplace. I looked in there. I think I found the gun. What are you talking about? You just don't know where to look. What a place for a gun. I just found something. Where'd you locate it? Sit down. Yeah. 
in the butler's pantry. Take this downtown for fingerprints. Yes, sir. Well, how do you count for that? I don't know, sir. Ever handle a gun? No, sir. Well, you say you never shot a gun. No, sir. Well, here's your first lesson. Shoot this. Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't know how. I, I, I couldn't. Just pull the trigger. So you never shot a gun before? No, sir. But you knew enough to release the safety catch before you pulled the trigger. Take him downtown. You can't do that. Are you trying to hang this on him? Oh, do you want to go along? You bet I do. Jerry. Fine. We might help you to remember where you were when that shot was fired. It's all right, darling. That's all for the present. We're very grateful to you, Mrs. Fraser. I hope we won't have to bother you again. Will it be all right if I go away for a few days? Certainly, as long as we know where you are. Miss Calhoun, we'll get in touch with you when we need you. I'd like to go away for a few days myself. No, I think you'd better stay in town, Miss Calhoun. Very well. Whatever made you think of the butler? Whatever made me think of the butler? Why, I suspected him from the very first moment. the gun get in the butler's pantry? I don't know. But you were the only person who cleaned the pantry. Never mind. We don't have to ask him any more questions. All we need now is a confirmation of the facts we have. On the second of this month, you went to a pawn shop located at 374 Hillcrest Drive, Newark. No, no. You bought a revolver there for $15. No, I didn't. The pawnbrokers identified your photograph. It's a frame-up. But before you bought the gun, you examined several rifles. I didn't. He tried to sell me a rifle. Oh. I thought you'd walk into that. Okay, let's have it. Come on, you've admitted you were there. Come clean. I bought the gun from Mr. Marlowe. You mean to say Marlowe sent you to a pawn shop? No, he gave me $20 to buy a gun. Oh, I see. He gave you $20 to buy a gun. You only paid $15 for it. You chiseled him out of five dollars. Well, I hid the gun for him, didn't I? All right. Now let's have it, step by step. After I bought the gun, Mr. Marlowe kept it in a drawer in his room. About a week ago, the gun was missing. Did you say anything to Marlowe about no, it? No, I didn't think it was any of my business. Go on. Well, uh, when the shot was fired, I put on my bathrobe and rushed down. Fraser's body was lying on the ground. A woman was screaming, and Mr. Marlowe was... Yeah, tell us about Mr. Marlowe. Oh, he was trying to keep the ladies quiet. Then I saw a gun lying by the French window. The gun you bought from the pawn shop? Yes. I picked it up, slipped it in my bathrobe, then I hid it in the pantry. Marlowe asked you to hide it? No. Now, what did he say when you told him where it was? I didn't tell him. A three-year-old child could make up a better story. And you expect me to believe that? I don't care what you believe. It's the truth. I did have Grigson buy a gun, and it disappeared about a week ago. Oh. The gun just walked out of the desk, eh? I don't know what happened to it. Did you ask Grigson about it? No, when I saw it was missing, I was glad. Oh. And why were you glad? Because I was afraid I might use it on Fraser. You bought it to use on Fraser, didn't you? Yes. Why? Because he was up to something with Anne. She'd been writing to him. How do you know she'd been writing to him? I was in his apartment when the maid brought the mail in. I know Anne's handwriting. He didn't open the letter. He just looked confused and slipped it in his pocket. Any idea what it was all about? No, she denied everything. He lied. I was going crazy, I tell him. I'd have killed him, all right. I'm only sorry I didn't. Now, cheer up, Marlowe. Maybe we can prove you did. Will you please tell the district attorney that Mrs. Reardon is here? Sorry, he's busy. You'll have to wait. How do you do, Mrs. Reardon? Oh, Mr. Shane. Well. And what's a nightclub owner doing in the district attorney's office, if I may ask? Oh, I get around. Oh, you're not complaining about my husband's check, I hope. <laughs> oh, no, that hasn't bounced yet. Well, that won't be a bounce. That'll be an earthquake. <laughs> what might you be doing in the district attorney's office, if I may ask? Some new clue on the Fraser murder? Say, maybe you could help me. Well, I'd appreciate the opportunity. What was in that letter that Anne Calhoun gave you the other night? Letter that Anne Calhoun gave me? 
Oh, Shane, I'm sorry I won't be able to see you. Well, when I called you the other night, you told me to be sure and drop in and see you this morning. I know, I know. That was before the Fraser case turned up. Come in and see me next week sometime. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll call you when I'm ready for you. Okay. Goodbye, Mrs. Redden. Goodbye, Mr. Shane. Think it over. Mrs. Redden. Oh, I'd like to talk to you. I've got some very valuable clues. Yes, I've been reading all about your clues. But this is a new one. Well, tell it to your husband. Maybe he'll listen. It's no use. He isn't speaking to me these days. Smart fellow, Redden. I think Shane is mixed up in this case. Shane? Nonsense. But you... As it happens, I was talking to Shane over the telephone just about the time the murder was committed. What do you think he was doing? Holding a revolver in one hand and a receiver in the other? Ah. Maybe he's a ventriloquist. A ventriloquist? Mr. Kettling, I have some marvelous news for you. I tried to get you earlier, and then later I was busy myself. Uh huh. Shopping. What? The good news? Oh, well, it isn't exactly good. No, it looks pretty bad for poor Mr. Marlowe. But don't you worry. I have a wonderful plan. If I can get rid of my husband by 8 o'clock, I'm starting out and. Huh? Well, I can't tell you. No, because I'm not sure what the plan is. Oh. Goodbye, Mr. Kettling. You little double crosser. Well, you, you, you acrobat. Oh, wait a minute now. I can explain everything. You were doing so well with the case that I, well, I just got so discouraged I hid in the closet. You heard that phone call? I heard part of it. I wasn't interested much. You weren't interested much? No. When a man discovers that his wife's been double crossing him, nothing she can say is of any interest to him. Anyway, there's been a man from headquarters listening in, taking down the full conversation. You mean these wires have been tapped? Oh, Mike, did you get it? Okay. Well, then you know everything. Oh, no, no, I'm not that good, but I know Kettling and Marlowe hired you. How'd you find out? Oh, well, even a boob would get suspicious of his wife when he finds her giving out interviews, sneaking around when he's trying to question people and behaving in general like a madwoman. Besides, I'm the smartest detective in town. You said so yourself, remember? Of course, that was before you began to think you were the smartest detective in town. Anyhow, I got some clients. One client, a potential murderer. How do you know I haven't got more? Because nobody would hire you except somebody who wanted to spy on the DA's office. Is that so? To me, the most convincing proof that Marlowe's guilty is the fact that he hired you. Only a desperate man would do that. But he's not guilty. That's what you think, but of course you're paid to think that. He has his man buy a gun in order to kill Fraser, and Fraser's killed. That adds up, doesn't it? No, it doesn't add up. Someone stole that gun a week ago. Yeah, that's what he says. I can prove it. Well, if you do, you're a better man than I am, Gunga Din. If I do prove it, will you take orders from a better man? Sure, I know when I'm late. All right, you quit the DA's office, and I'll give you a job at the Reardon Detective Agency at a big salary. <laughs> and if you're licked, will you go home and look after the kids? It's a bet. What kids? Oh, I'm sorry. A woman with a career wouldn't have time to bring up a lot of children. But if you ever decide to give up that career, Mrs. Sherlock Holmes, come up and see me. We'll have a nice long chat. Oh, uh, I suppose it's only fair to warn you that wherever you go tonight, you'll be shadowed by one of my men. Oh, that's not fair, Bill. All's fair in love and war. Oh. Well, this is war in a way, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I guess it must be love, too. Otherwise, I'd have killed you long ago. It's a long, dangerous. Bill. Yeah? Doesn't this remind you of those Civil War stories where the Northern captain falls in love with the beautiful Southern spy? Well, I think it's romantic. Gee, we sure miss Mr. Fraser around here. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. Fraser.
Stick him up. <laughs> One move and I'll plug you. Let me go, please. I didn't know anyone else was in here. You think you'll ever leave this room alive? I'm married to the greatest detective in the world. He'll track you down to the ends of the earth. You mean Bill Reardon? Bill. Oh, I was never so glad to see anyone in all my life. It's lucky for you I was here. That fellow would have plugged you. Oh, my legs are shaking. I was really scared. Now, what are you doing in that get-up? I'm a lone widow who forgot her keys. Plain idiot who lost her brains. Oh, these widow's weeds are hot. I hope, darling, I never lose you in the summertime. Oh, any other season, I suppose, it'd be okay. It'd be much more comfortable. I know what. Shh. We'll do our searching together. If you find a clue, you tell me. And if I find a clue, I'll I tell you. I know. If you find a clue, you'll tell the newspapers. Nitwit, I believe you'd answer it. Maybe it's a clue. Mrs. Fraser's stockings aren't any better than mine. Are you searching or sightseeing? Mm, this is the kind she wears, all right. Love's temptation number five. Oh, will you get me some for my birthday bill? It's only $25 an ounce. Hey, come out of there, you thief. It was a wall safe. What are you hiding from me? Don't touch me or I'll shoot. Oh, my letter! Give it to me, it's mine! Sally! Sally, come back here! Never mind. I'll get that later. Sit down, please. You want to tell me about it? No. You wouldn't believe me anyhow. Maybe not. I'll tell you what I do believe. I believe that you wrote Fraser a blackmailing letter. Black and when he wouldn't be blackmailed, you killed him. No, no. Oh, yes, you did. No. I'll tell you. All right. You might as well tell me the truth. I'll find out anyway. I was desperate. I'd lost $2,000 at roulette. Roulette where? At Shane's place across the river. And I gave him a bad check for it. So I wrote to Walter, asking him for old times' sake to lend me the $2,000. And he did? Yes. If that was all, why did you take your life in your hands and steal in here? 
because I thought Lola would find the letter and give it to the papers. I didn't want Jerry to find out. Oh, can't you understand that? Are you sure Jerry doesn't know and suspect the worst? You're trying to trap me into saying he killed him. He didn't. He didn't. If anybody did, it was Lola. She was jealous. She... Oh, I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, yes, you do. I'm afraid I'll have to place you under arrest, Miss Lola. You Dalton. can't. You've got nothing to arrest me for. Have you got a permit to carry this gun? No. Then I can hold you on the Sullivan Act. Oh, no, no, no. That's better than suspicion of murder, isn't it? Uh... Oh, hello, Bill. Home so early? For the last time, are you going to give me that letter? What letter? All right, boys, get to work. Rip the place wide open. Bill Reardon, I won't allow a strange man to search my apartment. I know my rights. You don't know anything. I thought you'd pull some cockeyed idea like that, so to save an argument, I brought along a search warrant. Oh, it's pretty. Will you autograph it for me? Fogarty, take the kitchen. Flanagan, the bedroom. Be sure and put everything back where you found it. Empty everything in the place, including the garbage can. Oh, I wish I'd known you were coming. I just emptied it. All right, off with you. That's a fine way to treat my husband. What are you looking for? A letter. Imagine a big man like you wanting to play post office. You're getting warm, Mr. Flanagan. Am I? Mm -hmm. Warmer. Warmer still. Hot. Very hot. Red hot. Cold. Getting warm again. Warmer, hot, hot, cold, cold, ice cold. Well, now am I getting hot? Just under the collar. Go on. Listen, don't pay any attention to what she says. Just search every inch of this place. You play by yourself. I'm busy. Hello, Mike. You there? Oh, you aren't there. You old faker, I thought you said this wire was tapped. Hello, 376. I'd like to make an appointment to see you. Well, if it's about that other matter, just forget it, won't you, and keep the money. Oh, but this is very important. Just a moment. Who is it? Oh, it's that dumb Reardon woman. You see, I'm not seeing many people these days. I've just come across a letter that I'm sure will interest you. See here, find out what it's about. Well, I'm going out, but I'll be back about 9 o'clock. Would that be all right? 9 o'clock is fine. I'll be there. Goodbye. Hey, Flanagan, I'll finish in here. I want to keep an eye on her. I can tell when she gets nervous. How you doing, honey? You're still cold. All right, it's your turn. You want me to help search? Oh, no, you're going to be searched. Oh, Bill, you wouldn't dare. All right, if you'd rather have the boys do it. Oh, Bill. Take your shoes off.
Bill, stop it. Don't you dare. I haven't any letter on me. It would rustle. Bill, don't take any more off me. Don't you dare take another thing off. Bill, listen. Bill, you old meanie. Give me that search warrant. I'm going to take it home and read it. I've been here four hours, and we still haven't decided when I get the 50 grand. I can't pay you till the estate is settled, can I? The question is, will you pay me then? I'll pay you all right. I know I'll get my money. Listen, if the police ever found out that your husband was writing out checks to Ann Calhoun and that you knew about it, they might even suspect you of the murder. And if they ever found out that I left you to marry Walter, they might even suspect you. Who's the man? I don't know. Boy sounds familiar. What are you sticking around for? She'll be here any minute. Watch your step and don't say anything to the Reardon lady. Because if you even say hello to her, that dame thinks she has a clue. The wrong clue, but a clue. Whoever the guy is, he certainly knows my wife. Good evening, Mrs. Fraser. Good evening. Sit down, please. Thank you. You said something about a letter. Yes, a letter that Ann Calhoun wrote to your husband. Oh, even if it meant finding the murderer, I wouldn't want anything cheap to be printed about Walter. Well, I know how you feel, but see for yourself. At least we'd find out what Ann Calhoun wrote. Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Fraser, you had no right to destroy I'm that. I'm sorry, Mrs. Reardon, but I can't have any slurs on Walter's memory. Don't you want your husband avenged? Yes, I want him avenged, but I don't want his name dragged through the mud. Well, that just means I'll have to find another clue, that's all. But don't you worry, Mrs. Fraser. I get one a minute. Perhaps I can give you a very good clue. Wait a minute. I wonder how a smart girl like me married such a dumb cluck as Bill Ridd. <laughs> anyway, he's got more sense than that baboon he's working for. There. Now we can let our back hair down. Who planted that dictaphone? Oh, probably that silly husband of mine. As if anyone wouldn't have sense enough to look for a dictaphone. How long do you suppose it's been there? Well, I haven't the faintest idea, but it looks awfully new, so I guess it hasn't been used much. I don't like this silence. You sure nothing's the matter? Seems all right. I don't like it. Come on, Flanagan, let's go upstairs. I'll tell you something, but you must promise not to reveal where you got it. Why, 376, you can trust me. When I went to the phone just before the shot was fired that night, I heard someone on the line. Wrong number? No, no. Someone was in the apartment talking on the extension. Someone was talking on the phone. Well, there was no one else there but you four and the butler. The butler. I knew it was the butler all the time. No, no, it wasn't the butler. I know his voice. Well, who was it? I don't know. What was he talking about? He was talking to the district attorney about gambling. Talking to the district attorney about gambling? Then it was Shane. He was talking to the district attorney at that time. He was in the apartment. I knew it was Shane all along. All right, Mrs. Fraser, get your things. We're taking you down to headquarters. Snooper, you can't do this to my client. Shut up. You're under arrest, too. Is this yours? You'll have every chance to explain later. Don't talk, 376. Don't talk. Now, Mrs. Fraser, we know there was a man in your apartment. Who was it? Shane, Mick Shane. Shane, huh? And he wanted $50,000, didn't he? For what? I owed it to him. You owed it to him? What for? I lost the money playing roulette. Shane had promised me that he'd, he'd give me time to, to pay, but when this happened, he started pressing me, and 
I couldn't give him the money. I, uh, I didn't have it. Shane seems to have done all right with that joint of his. Did you know that Ann Calhoun had lost money there? Why, yes. We were there together when we both lost. Well, what about the remark that Shane used to be the boyfriend? It's true. I was a showgirl in Chicago then. I thought I'd left all that behind me when I married Walter. All right, Mrs. Fraser, that's all. You won't be disturbed again, I promise. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Well, that seems to let her out. Whom do you suspect now? now? What about this guy, Shane? He keeps turning up in the case. Oh, Shane's a gambler who uses strong-arm methods to collect. They all do. Just the same. I'm not overlooking the fact that Fraser took his girl away from him. I wish somebody would do the same thing for me. What did all the Fraser tell you after you cut that wire? It's a good reading light if I had anything to read. Oh, you're out of matches. Here's some. What did Lolo Fraser tell you after you cut that wire? She made me promise not to tell anyone, so don't you repeat it. I won't. It was just by accident that she found out about it. Found out about what? Oh. Oh, no. I couldn't betray her confidence. It's my Girl Scout training. Can you tie knots? Hello, darling. You're wasting your time. What did she tell you? What did she tell you? What did she tell you? Now, Mrs. Reardon, we know Lola Fraser told you something. Ten to one, it wasn't important, but if you'll just spill it, we... Well, we can all get some sleep. Are you sleepy? Why don't you drink some strong black coffee? Oh. Oh, that clock. Bother you? No, no, I just wondered if that's the right time. I have an appointment, you know. Fogarty. Will you please stop that? My, you're a nervous type, Mr. Flanagan. What you need is fresh air and exercise. Unless I can use a hose on her, I give up. She's your wife. Haven't you any influence with her? Uh, I think she'd talk if I promised to resign this job and go back to our office. Well, tell her you'll do it. Promise her anything. Okay. Good morning, darling. That's all, boys. Well, it's another day, isn't it? Listen, honey. I want you to try to realize how serious this is. Gosh, Bill, I love you. Listen. A man has been murdered. The killer must be found. Well, if you let me out, maybe but I But this can... is a matter for the police. Now, if you'll work with them, I'll... I'll promise to take another try at that office of ours. Cross your heart. Cross my heart. Well, Lola told me that a few minutes before the shot was fired, she picked up the phone. A man was talking to the district attorney about gambling. Shane? Yes, I told that fathead boss of yours so at the beginning, and he wouldn't listen to me. Bless you. Fogarty! Uh, how much does that perfume in Mrs. Fraser's cost? Twenty-five dollars an ounce. I'll buy you a whole gallon of it. Keep her here, Fogarty. I'm coming, too. Hang on to her. 
Lola Fraser overheard your conversation with Shane on the Marlowe telephone. But you checked on their phones. No calls came out of there. I know. There's no record of it. I don't know where Shane phoned from or how the wires got crossed, but I do know that call was planned in advance as an alibi. That means Shane's the killer. That's what your wife said. Well, even so, it might be true. Goodbye, Angel. Keep her locked up before she gets another clue. I like this one. Put her in a cell. It will be a pleasure. I'm sure Mr. Shane didn't come in at all last night. Give me the key. You wait here. Send out a call to have Shane picked up. I'll take a look around. Yes, sir. This is Reardon. Well, what are they going to do to me now? It's Mr. Ketterling. He's arranged for your release. Come on. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Arrest Nick Shane. Wanted for murder. Description. 40 years. Dark complexion. Slight build. Armed and desperate. Take no chances. Well, keep on ringing. How long ago was Mr. Ridden released? About a half an hour ago. Ketterling showed up with a writ of habeas corpus. Well, take a man with you and get over the red in the pocket right away. Yes, sir. And send another man over to Shane's hotel to warn Bill. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Keep on ringing. He might answer it. Bill Ridden, I wouldn't forgive you for all the perfume in the world. Bill, Bill, where are you? Bill, oh, don't hide. Where'd you put the perfume? Oh, quit horsing around, will you? Once to a... Break it in. It's Nick Shane. I'm glad you're doing a little investigating around here. It's been awful lonesome. Yeah. Hold that. What's that? It's a handy little instrument for unlocking doors. What are you gonna do now? Try to find out where Shane telephoned the DA from. I found it. Perfume. I guess this guy got what was coming to him. We got orders to keep you right here. Oh, I'm weak in the knees. Don't faint, lady. Smelling salts in the bathroom. Will you help me? Oh, sure, of course. Certainly. Please. Oh, excuse me. Are you all right, lady? What's the trouble, Mrs. Red? Oh, oh hello. It's nothing. Um, uh, how's the baby? Oh, just fine. He's got a tooth. Oh, swell. Are you by any chance going down Park Avenue near 54th Street? Well, it's a little bit off our beat, but seeing it's you. Thank you.
Everything's dead around here anyway. I'm calling the DA's private wire. Will he be surprised? Hello. Hello, Chief. Listen, I think I busted the Fraser murder wide open. Yeah, I got Shane right where we want him. I think I know who hired him to do the job, too. I bet you can't guess where I'm phoning from. No, I can't, but you'd better get home. Shane was just found murdered in your apartment. What? Well, where's Sally? Where's my wife? The police have her in your apartment. Hey, where you going? Thanks a million. You don't know what you've done for me. Okay, Mrs. Ed. Anytime. There's one fine little woman. I want to see Mrs. Fraser. I'm sorry, she isn't in. I'll wait. Who was it, Mary? Miss Fraser's packing up to go away, and she can't see anyone. Just tell her it's Mrs. Reardon, and she'll see me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Reardon, but I'm terribly busy. This won't take a minute. It's very embarrassing when a client commits a murder. Especially when they think I did it. What are you talking about? Nick Shane, why'd you kill him? Are you crazy? You don't seem very surprised that he's dead. As a matter of fact, I'm not. He was always being threatened. People were afraid of him and hated him. And you hated and feared him too, didn't you? Yes, I did. But I didn't kill him. Where did you get that? I'm sorry, Mrs. Fraser. I found it beside the body. All right. I did kill him. Now, don't you worry. We'll plead insanity. Yes, sir. That Mrs. Reardon is one wonderful little lady. There she is. That Reardon's a lucky guy. You know, if I wasn't married so happy... Calling I... all cars. Be on the lookout for Mrs. Sally Reardon. Height, 5 feet 3 inches. Weight, 110 pounds. Complexion blonde. Suspicion of murder. Pick her up, bring her in. If you wasn't married, so happy. Hey, Bill, your missus is up at Park Avenue and 54th Street. How do you know? We took her up there. That's Lola Fraser's place. That crazy kid will get herself pumped full of holes. Step on it. Come on, get back. Step back. Come on. All right, and don't forget my picture on the front page. Yes, I have an awfully cute one in a bathing suit. Anytime. Goodbye. Sally, you all right? Of course. Here's a confession. But she did it in self-defense. She came to my apartment to see me with no intention of killing anyone. She was minding her own business. But this fella Shane came along and made an awful row because she told me that he was guilty. Then he pulled a knife on her, and the first thing you know, one thing led to another, and here it is in the confession, see? And you're dope enough to believe all that. I'm ready. Ready for what? Ready for the truth? Walter Fraser wanted to divorce you. His lawyer's willing to swear to that. But you weren't willing to accept the settlement he offered. You knew as his widow you'd get a lot more than that, so you offered Shane $50,000 to kill him. That was a gambling debt. Yeah, that's what you told me before. But Shane's books show that you never lost over $200 at roulette. Then after Shane had killed him, he began threatening you, pressing you for the money. You realized that $50,000 was just the beginning, so you deliberately killed him. Take her away. <laughs> wow, what a client. Listen, honey, how'd you happen to suspect her in the first place? Yes, do you mind telling an old baboon? Well, when I got home, the apartment was still full of her perfume. Oh. Then when I accused her and she didn't ask how or when he was killed, I knew she'd done it. And you managed to get a confession with no more than that to go on? Well, I pretended I found her handkerchief beside the body. <laughs> Where did you find it? Right here in her grip. There are a lot of them, see? There you are. Mr. Redden, how about one with your pants on? Sure. So it was the widow, eh? Yes, yes. I uh, suspected her at first. Uh, that is, uh, Mr. Reardon here had traced a previous connection with Shane, so he and Mrs. Reardon had... Uh... What are you signing? I'm going to get $500 for the story. For this story? No, the love life of a girl detective. Bill. Don't be angry. I wasn't going to give him any of the real inside dope. <laughs> <laughs> 